Hey everyone. So I recently found this collection of creative paper and uh, it's full of maps and I just had to buy it. I only saw this overview back here but I figured it's just perfect for us. So we have here 12 large sheets of high quality paper. In German it doesn't say high quality, it even says luxury paper. So let's have a look through and uh, do some tracing. The first one I've already taken out because I was curious about it. So this one's a bit complicated for me because I don't know what it says. It might be upside down in fact. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing that here we have probably the capital and then I guess these are a number of streets leading off across the island. And uh, I'm assuming that these are more cities, but unfortunately I can't read any of it. So this one's a bit of a mystery map for me. It's quite beautiful the way that the mountain ranges are put in. the way the rivers arrive at the sea. We have a number of small islands here off the coast. And I'm not sure, but I think right here and right here, it doubles. There's a description somewhere. Right. It's a Japanese map of the Edo period. And I did in fact have it the right side up. So small victories. But we're going to put this one aside for now because I can't really tell you about that. a map of Europe showing the region from the Netherlands to Poland and northern France to Hungary from the 19th century. This one's also mirrored at the center. We have up here the Netherlands with the Frisian Islands here. And Friesland. We have everything written in German, so we have Nordbrabant, Münsterland, Saterland, this would be Oldenburg, I think, 
Lüneburger Heide next zu Bremen and Hannover, the Altmark and Mittelmark. We have here the Pommersche Seenplatte and some part of Preußen. Is that of Preußisch? But then it cuts off, so I'm not sure what it says here. We have, um, I think this is Niederlausitz, Niederschlesien and Oberschlesien. We have Galicien near Krakow, which you know, can easily be confused with the region in uh, Spain. But this is an old region of the uh, former Habsburg Empire. Here we have Hungary and Austria, Bohemia, Moravia. We have a mountain range up here. Kleine Karpaten and of course there would be a mountain range here but I'm not seeing a name for it. Here's a Skibirge Böhmerwald, so the Bohemian Forest. This would be Beischerwald. I don't know if this should say Bavarian. We have Schwäbische Jura, Franken Jura Oberpfalz, and Frankenhöhe. This part here, Frankenland, still belongs to Bavaria, but I learned early on that you're not allowed to call the people there Bavarians. They are Franken. That's something else. We have a really neat view of the Rhine. Going up north, past Köln, and off towards the sea. Here will be the Schwarzwald and the Vogesen, so this mountain range in France, in Alsace. We have Luxembourg here, the Ardennen, there's some really beautiful horses from here. And then here we have Schweizer Jura, so part of Switzerland, and you can see the Alps all the way up to Vienna right here. We have the Wienerwald, here will be the Neusiedlersee and the Plattensee or Palaton. We have the Karwanken, Krain and Friaul, so this would be Italy and Slovenia, Styria, Upper and Lower Austria. And maybe one of the most beautiful regions in Austria, the Salzkammergut. Plenty of beautiful mountain lakes here. We have Munich, the Allgäu. Here's Innsbruck. It's really hard to see in between all of these mountain ranges. And then here we're already in Zürich, so Liechtenstein should be somewhere here in between, but I can't see it right now. Too many mountains. But that's a really neat map. I like this one. I wish it was a bit bigger. Let's 
see what else we have. Alright, it says the next one is a map of Europe from 1750. And I think we can leave that in because it's quite small and you can tell that it's duplicated here on the sides, so it won't get much bigger. So, I didn't realize at first what this is or what all the text said until I looked at the uh, Germanica part and here it says Vater unser, der du bist im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name So we have the name of the region and then we have the uh, Pater Noster. What is it called in English? I have to admit, I don't know. But we have it written in, I guess, a script that's typical for the region and in the different names. So here we have uh, Latinos, I guess this would be Latin. We have Italica, so this would be Italian. Gallica with French and for Juliana this uh, might be the Occitan language but I'm not sure here we have Hispanica so Spanish uh, Catalani Catalan Lusitania here we have Cantabrica. I'm not sure what this says. And here in the south we have Mauritan. Right. We have the British Isles with Anglo Saxon, Pictus Gotica, and Valica. Island here, but I can't quite decipher what this says. We have the Mare Germanicum and the Mare Balticum, Mare Cantabricum, Mare Mediterraneum. Let's continue down here. We have Corsica, Sardinia. Mallorca, Sicilia, Creta and Cyprus. Here it says Hellenica. Mm, Ogenius Hellenica, I think that reads. But that's probably Latin. I'm not sure what that Greca, so Greece. And we can see we have different alphabets here. This is in the Greek alphabet. And here, Turkica, we have the Arabic alphabet. It says Greca Barbara. Again, a Greek script. We have Pontus Elfxinus, I think, with the Grim, Tartaria. Then here we have Illyri, called Slavonica, Russica, with the old Cyrillic script. And you can see there are a number of different ones here, some Arabic script in there. Here in Polonica we have a Latin script. We have Preussen here. I'm not sure what these two say. C 
some land, but I don't know what the first letter is. Same here with these three. The Baltic one, basically. Then this should be Finonica, Laponica, Scandinavia. So it's here Germania, Transmarina, so I guess the um, Germanic areas across the sea with some runes. Norvegica and Svegica. And here we have Kelto, Fiotiska. I really don't know what I'm reading here half the time. The center we have Siebenbürgen, Hungary, Bohemia, and the funny thing is, I had a look at this map earlier, and the only city I found was Vienna, right here. There's no Rome, no London, no Paris, and now uh, Istanbul, nothing. Only Vienna. So my guess is this was probably uh, where by the Habsburgs. <laughs> but it's pretty neat with all the different alphabets here on the side. I like the way it looks. Alright, then we have a map of the South Pole showing expedition routes from 1900. So again, this is just an A4 map. We can leave it in. We have the Antarctic continent and the South Pole with the tip of South America here and the South Shetland and South Orkney Islands this would be West Antarctica and you can see you don't really have a coastline you just have sort of an outline I guess of where the ice might be we have Coatsland We have Enderby Land, Camp Land. Here it says this is open water. King William II Land. Here it says who was Ice Predictors Land, so land covered in ice. Knox Land, Flood Land. I think this says. Balani land, I can't quite read it here. Sabrina land, Northland, Clary land, Adelaide land, Disappointment Bay. Someone didn't have a good time there. The uh, Ross Sea, Victoria land. Again, we have a note here who was Ice Predictors land. Or Iceland, a high wall of ice. King Edward Land. And then we're going back up here. Again with a number of notes. This is the southernmost point that was reached by James Cook in 1774. Here's a window that was reached by the Belgica in 1899. The southernmost point visited by von Billinghausen in 1821. We have Pack Ice 1898, Pack Ice 1821, and so on. And then it's kind of hard to see where the roots are, so took the liberty and printed a map that's not looking quite as fancy, but it has more colours. 
I hope you can see that well. We have in green James Cook, seventeen seventy-two to seventy-four, coming in from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. We have Kerguelen Islands, which are part of France. Here we had the magnetic pole in 2008, that's also interesting. Then you went past New Zealand, Christchurch and Wellington. And then continued his journey all the way around and left off into the South Pacific. In 1675, so Quite a bit earlier, we have Anthony de la Roche, not circumnavigating Antarctica, but still coming quite far south. Then we have, let's see, we have James Ross here in yellow, 1840 to 1841, but I'm not sure how he came in because this is just a circle here past the Ross Sea towards Australia, Tasmania and going around again, so there's something missing here we have Dumont d'Urville, 1839-40 also on one of those loops I really hope they got out we have Charles Wilkes, 1839-42 So quite a lot of routes here south of Australia. And then we have uh, Billingshausen Sea here in blue. Billingshausen 1819 to 21. Coming in from the Atlantic. Here across the Southern Ocean. towards Tasmania and then coming back in here continuing this journey past Scott Island Amundsen Sea and then past the tip of South America leaving again in the South Atlantic Out of these people, I really only know James Cook and uh, Ross because I watched the terror. I think there's actually a region here that's named after one of the ships here, Erebus. Probably Erebus Bay. Sierra Franklin. I think there's a part missing, but I don't know. I can't find the second. Franklin Bay, Franklin Sea, something like that. All right. So the next one is the distribution of principal animals about 1900. But as you can see, this is a very, very small map. And pretty hard to trace or read, so let's skip that one. Then we have another Japanese map of the Edo period. A bit taller, but again, not for me to read. And then we have a map of Paris from 1922.
Okay, so this is also duplicated on the back. We have the center of Paris here with the sin here in blue. And the Ile de la Cité right at the center with Notre Dame. And the Ile Saint Louis right next to it. Finally, I never knew that Notre Dame was on an island in the Seine. It just, it really surprised me when I got to Paris. I kind of hadn't expected it. Here, when, not too far away from Notre Dame, when you walk along the Quai du Louvre or Quai des Tuileries, you get to this beautiful park, Jardin des Tuileries. these fountains in the center and this beautifully layout geometric garden design we have the Minister de Financier at the Place du Carousel and the Palais du Louvre right here on the other side we have the Place de la Concorde and from there you can walk along the Champs-Élysées all the way up to the Arc de Triomphe at the Place de l'Étoile and from there you have a number of avenues Avenue de la Grande Armée Avenue Friedland Boulevard de Sourcel Avenue uh, Wagram Avenue Clever, Avenue Victor Hugo. We have here the Gare Saint Lazare and the Opera, not far from it. And I think uh, the first time I stayed in Paris, I stayed not too far away from the Gare de Lazare in the smallest flat I've ever seen. But it was okay, it was a student flat and a friend of a friend basically let us stay for the night. We have another train station here, Gare du Nord. We have the Hôpital Saint Louis, the Gare de l'Est, Gare du Lyon is down here. If you want to go south, and then I think there should be another one somewhere down here. Gare du Champ de Mars. We have the Jardin du Luxembourg. This beautiful big park with the Pantheon right next to it. Here's the Boulevard des Invalides. another park and then here on the other side from the Quai de Tuileries with the Louvre we have the Quai d'Orsay and the uh, Ecole des Beaux-Arts and there are, I think also at least two different museums but I can't quite see where they are there's an esplanade there's the Minister des Affaires Etrangères uh, we have the Gare d'Orsay. Well, maybe I'm wrong. We do have a magic city, and then, of course, on the side, the Tour d'Eiffel with the Parc du Champ de Mars. There's another city. A New York City plan from the 1890s. If 
if he wants to come out. Central Park and so we have Long Island the uh, Hudson Bay I guess North River I've never been to New York so my knowledge about what I'm saying is kind of sketchy but I do recognize Broadway. Let's just follow this up quickly. So we have Broadway here, and I think it's just really fascinating how these streets and avenues are laid out in this completely straight grid across this entire area. But for some reason, Broadway, I guess, just goes where it wants to go. We have Carnegie Music Hall here. We have Grand Central Station. Let's see, what else do we have? Madison Square Garden. The Grand Opera House. some kind of train station it only says Bahnhof I would assume it has a name we have Washington Square Duncan Square we have a market hall here and another one there and uh, it tells us things like here's a police station, here's a post office, another market hall. Quite a funny map in a way. And then you have a whole lot of ferries. Houston Street Ferry, Grand Street Ferry, Broadway Ferry. Here we have Long Island, RR Ferry, I don't know. We have Roosevelt Street Ferry, Fulton Ferry, and um, there's probably Wall Street Ferry, and a couple more here. I think this says Red Star Line, an American Line, Chamber Street, the Bluff Street, some uh, transatlantic thing. White Star Line, Old Dominion. And of course, quite fascinating as the whole thing is in German. But I think people in 1890 didn't know English very well. So this one I think is a bit of a shame too because these are telegraphic cables um, from Germany with foreign countries but it's so small it's just hard to really see where they're going but I might have a look into this where I can maybe find something a little more detailed because this would be really interesting Um, it doesn't give us a year, but maybe it says on the front. World Telegraph Network and Main Shipping Lines, 1890s. 
it's just quite fascinating that 130 years ago you already had all of these cables in the ocean This, I think, is again Tokyo. So, three maps of Tokyo. If you know Japanese, this is a, a great set of maps to buy. And the last one would be the area around London. Alright, so let's finish off with some information on London. One and the second one too. here snaking through the countryside we have Battersea Park past uh, Westminster, Victoria, Pimlico, Charing Cross Waterloo, London Bridge and Southwark we have Upper Pool and uh, quite a lot of Docks here in this area, probably. The Isle of Dogs, Blackwall, we have Buckley Street, the Victoria Docks, and the Albert Docks, Woolwich Street, Gallion Street, and Parking Street. Let's see. I'm not actually sure what would have been part of London at the time. I guess it's one of these areas that have just been sprawling out for so long. And I don't really see which of these lines would tell us um, the, the border of the city. But what I always find funny with these kinds of maps I've mentioned is when I read the um, the cities in Germany. We have places here like Tottenham that I just know because they have a famous football team. Of course there's Chelsea, Fulham. We have Brixton, Lambeth, Greenwich. Black Horse, Rushy Green. Southend. Be interesting to ladies over a current map of London. So let's see what we have here. I doubt that this is a contemporary one. So we're really zooming in here. Just this little corner. We have Regent's Park here on the edge with a station. I can't read this. I think it says Mary Lebone Station, but I've never heard of that station. We have Hyde Park, Green Park, St. James. Park. Here we have Buckingham Palace Gardens, separated by Constitution Hill and the Mall. 
We have St. James Square here in the center. We have Waterloo Station, Waterloo Road and Waterloo Bridge. We have Victoria Embankment, Upper Thames Street, London Bridge Station, London Bridge right here and Tower Bridge. Here it says Malt and St. Catherine Duck. And my knowledge of London geography is not that great, but I'm wondering whether this is where the Tate Modern is today, which historically was the area of the Panopticum, so a, a prison that was built, I guess, around 1800. I've just finished a horror podcast where they talked a little bit about that, and I've been meaning to look up some maps where maybe I can find um, some more of these buildings by... Uh, Robot Smirk, I think he was called. So that could come in useful for that video. Right, then now we have Houston Station, King's Cross Station. We have the British Museum where when I last went to London I spent an entire day there. The Court of Justice. Farringdon Station. Broad Street Station Blackleyer's Arm Station Bethlehem Hospital Lambeth Road Borough Road Blackfriars Road And here we actually have the Metro Station for Blackfriars Temple Station, Charing Cross Station, Trafalgar Square, the Houses of Parliament here. Oh, sorry, here's yes, State Gallery. Alright, so I got that wrong. The mode is something else. Here's the State Gallery. So this is where the Panopticon would have been. Okay, learn something new. Okay, let's build this back up. So the map of London and outskirts would have been from 1887 and the map of central London from 1920 so there's not even 40 years in between okay let's put these back in there and keep them somewhere safe for maybe another more detailed video in one of these areas or it says after all that these are gift and creative papers so maybe I'll just use them when Christmas comes around for wrapping some gifts in luxury paper alright so I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you again soon Goodbye